I already covered this, but man, I tell you, it is chilling to uh, read these quotes that I saw in an RT article uh, that then we put in an article. Michael Hastings, a um, friend of Michael Hastings, says he was working on biggest story yet about CIA, and we have that Fox News clip. But then in the RT article, and, and we have this in detail in our article on Infowars.com, Michael Hastings' wife vows to, quote, take down whoever did this. And that's reportedly what Sergeant Joe Biggs told Fox News, uh, Megyn Kelly, that something didn't feel right. And then you have witnesses saying you know, they heard an explosion, looked like it blew up. The fact that he was saying he was going off the radar, yeah, you can't criticize anybody for saying this is suspicious. You can't. You'd have to be crazy not to say it's suspicious like Pat Tillman. And I talked to his brother pretty soon after it happened, and he wasn't ready to come on the air at that time. My producer talked to him, and then I got handed the phone and got to talk to him. But they were like, we think more happened. We think it's a cover-up. And then it came out. The coroner wouldn't lie, the uh, Army coroner, a colonel, lieutenant colonel, and said uh, he was killed uh, up close with a, with a three-shot burst in the, in the front of the head. And, and so, I, I mean, again, we got criticized then for saying, could this have been some type of assassination? Bare minimum, ladies and gentlemen, they lied about it, said he was charging a machine gun nest. And it was McChrystal involved in that cover-up. Uh, but he was working on this big story. They put up this other story that he was investigating Kelly, who might or might not have supposedly, you know, uh, been about to have a relationship or something with Petraeus. It's total distraction, in my view. And the wife of Michael Hastings uh, has come out uh, and uh, said um, that he was not working on that story. It was the CIA and it was the biggest thing ever. So we are going to have um, one of his friends um, pop in at the bottom of the hour. I'll leave that as a surprise. Um, in the meantime, we're going to go to break here in a moment because this is a short little segment. Come back and go directly to your calls, uh, Jim and uh, Frank and everybody else that I just uh, mentioned earlier. But you know, they're now in the news telling us, give up all your rights of the terrorist will get you. What about the, 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 the corrupt interests that run the government? Aren't they the big threat historically? Eisenhower uh, told a university commencement speech, I've read the quote on air, getting back to Eisenhower, that you can have total security, but we'll have to put you in prison, to paraphrase the quote. And that's basically paraphrasing what Thomas Jefferson said and Benjamin Franklin. They all said, those that give up liberty for supposed security deserve and will get neither. You don't ever get security, especially long term, giving up your rights and becoming dependent. You become a slave. And what we have is a bunch of corporate special interests that want to continue wars. That's why they give the last generation of weapons to all these foreign governments that we develop, like China and Russia and even North Korea got reactors. So then there can be a threat and we've got to have this big military industrial complex to fight that. And it just goes on and on and on. And now millions of dollars per city for robots, for non-existent bomb events and just, and all the movies are about martial law and, 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 and now they're using the NSA to go after whistleblowers. I mean, this is unprecedented. It has a name. It's called Organized Crime Takes Over the Government. And, it, and the name of that is Tyranny. Tyranny. Tyrannus. Maximus is where we're going. The greatest tyranny the world has ever seen. The maximum corruption. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. go right to your phone calls for the next two segments. Then we have a special guest who was good friends with Mr. Hastings, uh, who blew up uh, joining us, unfortunately. Very sad. Um, really good reporter. I mean, that clip where he, I played yesterday where he, before, before he died a few days before, he was on TV and he said, the press has to organize against tyranny. We have to stand up. 
The government is trying to destroy free press in this country. If the press doesn't stand up for, the, for itself, nobody will. And then I'm going to do at least 30 minutes of overdrive today uh, with our guests that are with us for the next two days, uh, James Lane and Richard Grove. And they're going to be with us tomorrow in studio as well because I've kind of moved them into overdrive uh, today. They're down here down here visiting. They're the makers of the new uh, film that we're pre-selling. And we're going to premiere on PrisonPlanet.tv, but the DVD and the Blu-ray uh, of State of Mind. It's an amazing film that I'm in and a bunch of other people even more knowledgeable than I am are. Uh, very, very powerful. We're going to be talking about that uh, some in the next hour. Right now, let's go to Jim in New Hampshire. Uh, you're on the air. Welcome, Jim. Hello, Alex. I uh, love the show, and I um, so, so I wanted to make a point about uh, about the use of encryption, and, and that we um, you know we we should really be considering this as as a way of uh, helping thwart the uh, NSA's spying on you know domestic spying. Um, I, I think one of the things that uh, you know there, there's actually two technologies out there that I want to quickly mention. One, one is just encryption in general. Which actually, as as uh, Snowden mentioned in his question and answer, it's, um, it's it's actually a really effective way to prevent someone from from uh, intercepting your messages. Well, don't they? I mean, it, 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 is it the best system? Not even encrypting it yourself, but those systems that slice it up a thousand different ways and then recombine it on the other end. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, there, there are systems that do that. So, so I'm a software engineer. So that's my background. And, and yes, there, there's, there's there's a whole bunch. Of encryption, there's actually different you know, methods of encryption, different systems out there. But basically, I just want the users here to know: you know, start using it, start looking into it, start researching it. Whatever in encryption you decide to use, this will help. You know, this, this will help in, in that we will have sure because uh, I mean they can still crack it, but they have to sit there and mess with it and put it through different filters. And if there's hundreds of different types of encryption being used, uh, then it's going to gum up their works. Exactly right. Right, they they can still crack it, but you know, frequently even even the simplest of some of these uh, algorithms can take you know years sometimes to crack it. Even simple. But also, you can use things like Start Page uh, and, and and other free search engines, so you're through a proxy, so that you're not just volunteering to go right to the corporate NSA and just give them everything. And actually, you're making my next point for me. That's exactly what I was going to say. Star page is a great, you know, anything that hides you from Google and hides you from, from you know, the, the, the powers that be, that's, that's a great place to start. Also, look into peer-to-peer -to -peer networks. Peer-to-peer -to -peer, uh, networks use, uh, kind of uh, um, disperse the, uh, the network traffic around so you can't track people as easily. Uh, you know, but the unfortunate part is we shouldn't really even have to do any of this. We should really, you know, we should be able to communicate without thinking anybody's listening to it. And so. again, it's not that you're hiding something. Why do you lick the envelope with snail mail? It's so it doesn't fall out. It's so people don't read it. And it's not that you're hiding something if you're sending your grandmother some photos of a picnic or something because she asked for them. That's what my grandma is always asking for is photos of, you know, trips and things. She loves photos. She's almost 90 years old. But it's nobody's business. I mean, why do I have walls on my house? Why isn't my house uh, glass? I mean, what do I have to hide? Nothing. I want to be able to walk around, you know, at midnight in my underwear. Uh, and I don't think my neighbors want to see that either. Uh, you know, I don't look like uh, Kate Upton. So good good points. I appreciate I appreciate, I appreciate uh, you calling in. I better not make Kate, Kate Upton jokes. Because... <laughs> uh, Never mind. Let's just go ahead and talk to Eric in Pennsylvania. No, 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 wait, wait. He wasn't next. I apologize. Uh, Frank uh, on Obamacare, listening on 840 AM, KCBC uh, in Cali. You're on the air, Frank. Thanks for holding. How you doing? First time caller, Alex. The first thing, you're the greatest American uh, I've ever known, and my prayers are with you for you and your warriors. Oh, we my goodness. Nothing. Please, come nothing. on. <laughs> we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Obamacare. H.R. 3200-1001 speaks of this implantable chip. It's going to have your name, your phone number, your bank account, your dog's middle name. And well, let's be technical. It does fund in Obamacare. It, it cuts funding for all the surgeries and stuff you need and lets government tell your doctors what to do. And it's written by insurance companies to jack up prices and cut quality of care and bring in the death panels, which they now admit they have. But it does fund implantable microchips in the body. And now some say that means they can make it happen, but it does fund it. And it has this hub system that under law forces all your data illegally to give it to all these federal, state, and corporate groups. So it's also a big NSA thing. 
Yeah, and another thing, our brains are also um, on radio waves. So once you get that chip, can't they control our minds too? I mean, it might. Well, I mean, to be specific, board. DARPA admits for about fifty years they can put out different wavelengths that calm people or make them agitated. Uh, just like loud sound can make you agitated or, or nails on a chalkboard. But but this is uh, d different harmonics they have. Uh, and there is a lot of that going on. Most of it's classified. But the existence of it is there. Uh, and uh, generally, it wouldn't be a chip they put in you to control your mind. They would give you a vaccine that had a synthetic bi biological nanotech engineered virus, which they already have, that goes in and destroys areas of the cerebral cortex associated with resistance. And they call that the anti-stress vaccine. You know, if you watch the uh, uh, lobotomized biological androids in Disney's The Black Hole, they're not having any anxiety because they've been lobotomized. I mean, if you watch the one who flew over the cuckoo's nest that accurately shows what a lobotomy is like, these are more of a slight lobotomy. And there's evidence they've already been testing it on the public where people just can't get upset, but they can still be ordered around and told what to do. But the, the public's already like that without the brain-eating vaccine, as I dub it. I have a whole video on that. Just Google brain-eating vaccine. They're already like that to a great extent just from TV and culture. They're taught to shuffle around, uh, you know, just, just, just kind of muffling, stumbling through life because they've been spectators their whole life, wired like Plato's allegory of the cave, to just watch the images on the wall, not to actually be part of the real world. Wow. All right. Uh, that's it, man. Can I plug a book? Is that possible? Absolutely. You're on the air, brother. We don't screen your All calls. All right, man. Conspiracy 101. Uh, Amazon.com has a list of everything that you need to get started and find out the truth. Sure. Are you listening to us on 840 AM right now? You got it, brother. Well, that's awesome. I thought they were only carrying us on the weekends. No, they got you uh, 9 to 12, man, and right now that's all I can afford, and I'm so happy to hear. Yeah, that's a big station. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's great, man. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I mean, it's awesome how many stations put us on on the weekend, and then we're weekdays uh, in, in major cities all over the country, Chicago, uh, you know, uh, San Diego, uh, Dallas. Uh, uh, but the problem is, take... take uh, Orlando, we were on there one year. The station went from like number eight or nine in the ratings to number one with my show. And Man Cal before me, they put us both on. And then they just changed formats. And it's like, man, being number one on a station up against 50,000 waters, a 10,000 water. And I've done that over and over again. It's like it, being number one is not enough, folks. I just, and I'm not like wanting to beat Rush Limbaugh either. Uh, it's just that we we destroyed him, and it was in the news. It was in radio magazines that I've gone up against, and I'm not up against Limbaugh on purpose. This was the slot I was offered in 1998. They said, you want to go weekdays on this little network? We're putting you out here. That's where we have a slot. And I went up against Rush Limbaugh, and they said, yes. And so that's why I'm there. I, I wanted to be on at nights, quite frankly, because I kind of wake up at night. Uh, and uh, But, I mean, I've been up against Limbaugh toe-to-toe, -to -toe, well, hundreds of times because, you know, stations come and go over the years. But, I mean, there are at least more, more than 20 occasions that we have come up to him in the ratings or destroyed him. And, again, I'm not trying to destroy him you know, physically, get him off the air. It's just that I, I, I will defeat Rush Limbaugh in the free market of ideas. People, people like this show more than his. And I'm on a little radio network that's now got 1,400 affiliates, not my show, but Genesis has 1,400. That's a conservative number, by the way. Uh, so we're not a little network. We were a little network. It's the American dream. It's, it's the idea. People want hardcore libertarian patriot news. They, they want it unvarnished, and they get it here. And, and, and I will destroy all the competition if I'm put on a level playing field. In fact, on a stilted playing field, I'll beat them. But I've never given that chance. It's the stations always sell. Uh, thank you so much, Frank. Uh, spread the word to all the 840 listeners. Tell everybody on every station you're listening to us. Tell people to tune into your local AM and FMs right now. Uh, let's go uh, take a quick call here. Bruce in Michigan, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hi, I have uh, two practical uh, problems. I wonder if you have answers to them. Sure, brother. I'll try. Um, I got a letter in the mail from the Department of Health and Human Services, uh, U.S. Public Health. It's a RTI Project 12800, it says that I've been chosen among 200,000 people randomly 
by the Research Triangle Institute for a national study on health-related issues. Uh, an interviewer will come. I'm reading these three paragraphs real quick here and show you their ID card. Her name is Jill Blondin. It shows a facsimile of the ID card. Uh, you do not have to participate in this, but then it says in great big black uh, writing here, every person who chooses to complete the interview will receive $30 in cash. All the information is confidential, assured by federal law, blah, 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 blah. I wonder what the heck is this thing? Uh, should I just keep them out of the house? They what this away. is, and, and the people involved in it don't even know this, but Rand Corporation has put out the plans, others have put out similar plans. They're sending now monthly censuses to some businesses, yearly to everybody else. It, it, it's, it, it's not every decade. It's hundreds of questions. How many guns? How many toilets? I'm going to come back to you and finish answering your other question. But they've got all these corporations, too, just where you're constantly having your door knocked on. You're co constantly... We're here to talk to you. We're here to, and, and then they file it and send it off to the feds. And then they integrate it into databases. So it's called HUMET, Human Intelligence. Uh, the CIA now is operating domestically as well. And they're just training you to have people in your business 24 7. This is acclamation. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals. Now we'll remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Yeah, the truth is they call it services and they send you letters and all these different agencies do just trying to scare you into answering all their questions. And they've got all these private corporations going around and now they've got FEMA Corps, these uh, young college and high school students that can't get jobs, paid in many cases, coming to your door asking you creepy questions and then going back and reporting to the cops on you. Uh, I mean, they've got the, the doctors and the public schools on record asking the kids, what guns do your parents have? That's in the news again today. Uh, every authoritarianism that we've seen around the world is coming here. And you know we do it bigger and better in America. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you. Uh, but I don't know the particular group you're talking about. It, it rings a little bit of a bell. Most of these people are literally just doing a job contracted by the government, as that letter said, and that they, they think they're out helping people. Uh, but uh, sometimes, though, they send another group to, to, to go match up people that are on disability or other issues to see if you've been telling the truth. And the person coming to interview you doesn't even know why, uh, doesn't even know why they're coming. They're compartmentalized. In fact, most cases they are. So as a rule, uh, I don't talk to anybody. Police come to my door and they say, open the door. I'll say, what's it about? And then if they say, uh, we believe there's a robber in the area, have you seen anybody? And I'll say, uh, nope, I have a good day. Now, if they say your dog's running down the street, I'll say, oh, thank you, and open the door. Uh, if bureaucrats come here, I'm Secret Service, FBI, I, I just say, I'm not talking to you. You guys have such a history of lying and setting people up. Well, is this true or is this not true? Uh, I'm not talking to you. In fact, I've actually before to the FBI said, see my hand? Talk to it. Well, we're going to get a subpoena. Bring it. Talk to my hand. Then I go, hey, you know, the government ships in the narcotics, and I follow them out to their car, and I stand there as they, you know, get in the car and drive off, and I'm just like, you know, take some cancer viruses. Government loves you. You know, because the big lie is, is I know they're probably good guys. The point is, is I don't care. I'm done. I'm not playing games. I'm not going to play games with the system anymore. I, I'm not going to play patty cake anymore. I know the people running it at the top, 
are a bunch of offshore mega banks that folks are stealing Europeans' pension funds that they paid for, private and public. I know the, the, that the people who work for the government now are going to have their way of life destroyed as well. So I'm a little bit angry at them that they're victims too, and they're acting all high and mighty to me. When all I do is study this, I know what I'm talking about. I can have top professors on from any discipline, and I know the basics of it, and they're always blown away by it. Not because I'm even that smart. I decided to become an expert on the world. Doesn't mean I don't make a lot of mistakes either, but I try instead of an expert on football or an expert on how to act cool at a party with the guys or an expert on how to pick women up or an expert on how to go on the best vacations. I decided my life was going to mean something. And I was going to really try to figure out how the universe works from my limited temporal perspective. And I've done it. And I've made a difference. And I'm nobody. I know there are people out there a lot better than I am. A lot of you are. I want you to dare to fight tyranny. I want you to dare to stand up. I want you to get the new issue of the magazine that has 10 bumper stickers in it. You can buy the magazine, the new June, uh, uh, July issue at InfoWars. Store.com. I want to change the world for good. I don't want to just sit here and take it. Does that answer your question, Bruce? I think I shouldn't give them an earful, but just say uh, no thank you. And Oh, no, if you give them an earful, if it's a bad group, and I'm, I don't know this group you mentioned, then they'll, they'll come down on you even harder. It's best to, you know, uh, you have the intel, you give them no intel. You don't give them anything, and then you, you move. And I don't mean you physically move. It, 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 it's all about movement is life. Movement is survival. And so it's always be changing, always be doing new things. And don't give them power. If people ever show up acting powerful, they'll try to menace you into groveling. And then that, at a, at a, like a dog-like level, empowers them to then abuse you. If you are very firm and very serious with people and tell them uh, you need to move on to a, to a softer target, uh, predators will move on. Uh, to to someone who's uh, a, a a victim, and I'm not saying push them off on the next poor sap. Try to get other people around you to not be victims. You know that's what this broadcast is really all about. People always ask me what is it, and it's hard. I don't want to be a victim. I don't want you to be a victim. I want you to live good. I want to build a civilization. Whether you live in Mexico or Germany, whether you live in Japan or South Africa, whether you're black or white, I don't care. I want you to be empowered. But when you're not empowered and you're programmed by the globalist, you become my enemy because you are following their programming. I, uh, so that's it. You either join the human team or you're my enemy because you are my enemy. They're coming after us. And I refuse to buy their propaganda. I've broken with them. You understand, folks? And that's a process. I'm breaking with the New World Order more every day. That's how we have victory. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. 
The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden, for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden, that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers, with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide-free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.